the way you use this is if you have a lot of work to do and you just don't have enough time to do it all, all right, this can be a really good way to break up your research, break up your work, um, the strategy is to become an expert at a small part of it, all right, and work collaboratively with other people, then get back together and get all the information that you need. Uh, I like the analogy of what Ford did when they invented the uh, assembly line for vehicles. It used before like the Model T, before it went into mass production. They had one person who made the whole car, and it was a very long process, and every car was different than the other one because it depended how that guy made it and what, or girl, or how good they were at it. Um, but when they started the assembly line, they got people to get really highly skilled in one specific area, and they were an expert at their part, and they were able to do that quickly and efficiently and very well and send it on to the next part. Now, it doesn't mean that if you were the guy who put the doors on, it doesn't mean that you can't work on wheels or you don't understand how the car works or everything about the car. It just meant you were an expert in one area. All right, so similarly, uh, when it comes to uh, large projects or something like that, let's say that you were in a, in a class or you are in nursing and you're starting an internship or you're doing insulation or working on cars and you have, uh, they give you this huge manual that you have to read, right? And they tell you, all right, so I know there's not a whole lot of time, but you need to, you know, read this, learn it. You got, you know, three days. You need to get through the whole thing and know it inside and out. All right, so if that's the case and you got a bunch of these things, you're like, well, I got like 700 pages to read. I can't read that. But there are five or six other people who are doing the same thing. All right, the strategy is, you know, divide up the reading, divide up the work, you know, do it by topic or do it by chapters or do it by page numbers, all right? And then uh, do a really good job, become an expert on that part and get back together, share our information, pull it together, and then we get all of the information while only doing, you know, a, a portion of the work and, and doing our part very well. Does that make, a sen Does that make sense to you? Yeah. All right, so, so that's a concept for Jigsaw. When I was in college, I took a class called American, or no, it was Contemporary American Women Gothic Writers. So it was like gothic literature written by American women in the last 20 years. All right, so all of it were new books. Some of them had just come out. And it was a five-week summer ca class. Our teacher left for Italy after week four, so it, we crammed it into four weeks. We had 13 books to read in four weeks, and this was the thinnest one. Okay, oh, no. we're, The thinnest one, the witching hour, yeah. And this one is um, around, a th it's about 1,000 pages. I so Right? And, and I don't read very quickly. You know, I, I love reading, but I'm not a fast reader. You know, so for me, I could, I could knock out 150 pages of something like that in somewhere between two and three hours. And that's about how much time I have because when you're taking a summer course, you typically uh, don't take more than like two courses per session because you understand they're taking this big course and knocking it down into like four or five weeks. So you don't overschedule yourself like you do in the semester. Uh, so I would go home and read for a couple hours a night, and I was with a group of people who we kind of went all through college together. A lot of them were going to be other English teachers or English majors. So we just got a group of eight, and we get to a book that would be you know 1,200 pages, and you know we'd say, okay, well I got one zero to 150, and we'd all read it, go home, read 150 pages. We'd summarize what we read. So we have a summary. We'd pull out the concepts from the course and class that were important that we came across. And then we'd talk about why is this important. We'd get it all together, and we'd meet up in the library a half hour beforehand. We'd all come in with our Cornell notes. Uh, we'd share everything, and I would get all 1,200 pages by us talking and going through that you know, while reading 150. So in a day, I'm reading a 1,200-page book. You know, whereas if that's me, you know, that takes me eight days to go read by myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this was a, is a really good strategy. When, when is it not appropriate? Uh, if you're going to do knee surgery. Yeah, like, you, know, you don't be like, hey, I'll read the first couple pages and you read the other, just tell me how to do it. Like, no, no, you don't do it for that. If you need to be an expert, you carefully go through and do expert stuff. Uh, but the concept for this is instead of just rushing through a ton of material and hoping to remember some of it, take your time, become an expert at a part, meet with someone else, and use your collaboration skills to get all the information you need. Basically what we do for school. Similar, yeah. Um, you know, like that's a, so like that's why today's question was, how can the jigsaw strategy be used to help with research? Really useful when, re when researching. That's why professionals who are researching the medical field or whatever field you're in, they don't just tell one person, you, you do it all by yourself. No, they all research, you know, and they break up the research. Okay, well, I'll do quantitative data, you do qualitative, you're gonna go out and interview people, you're gonna do this blank, you know, you're gonna communicate with whoever, and they share all their information, but they, they work together. That's the concept, all right? So how does that work in the classroom? How can we use this? Well, I'm not giving you 1,200 pages, first of all. Uh, but what we, what we will do is our intro to the English lit part out of the book, pages two through 11 cover these topics. 
And instead of me saying, hey, you know, we're going to read through this and use all this class time you know, for, for us to read page by page, or me saying, all right, everyone sit there and take notes for today and tomorrow while I talk about all these topics and just letting you get bored to death like zombies. All right, the goal is, you know, don't send this home. Don't make you read 10 pages out of a textbook, you know, while doing this. But have you number off, get with a partner with the same number, become an expert in one of these different topics. So you're reading like three to five paragraphs and then finding two other sources. All right, and then getting your information and getting back into your big group when you're done. All right, and you'll both go share to your groups. All right, so you become an expert. Then when other people talk, you'll just get their info and write it down. All right, so you'll, the other people will present the topic. So you're doing like 12.5% of the work very well, and then you're paying attention using your speaking and listening skills to get that info from everybody else when you get back in the big group. Is this starting to make some sense? Yeah. So what we'll do is we should have 14 or 13, so three. 9, 11, 14, perfect. We're going to do two groups of seven. We'll do the first seven topics, and I'll take the eighth one. And so what you'll do is you'll get into two groups of seven. In your groups, you're going to number off one to seven. All right? So that'll tell you which topic you have. After you number off one to seven, you're going to find the person with the same number from the other group, and that's what you're going to work with today. So today, these are, going to, these are our goals. You're going to do three tasks, and you're going to find them from three sources. This is kind of like a funnel. So the first thing we do is summarize. Are you with me over here? Yes. Okay, we've got a lot of people all day today who I finished talking about this and then they all line up my desk and say, how do I do all of this? So it starts out like a funnel. You're going to work together, look up three resources. All right, after you're done looking up the three resources, you're going to summarize them together, three to five sentences. Do not make this long because remember, we're going to get information for eight topics. If you have eight people, I'll write a page and you're writing eight pages of notes. That's ridiculous. Don't do that. All right, so in three to five sentences, summarize it. All right, if, you need, if there's just a ton of important information, then bullet, star it, abbreviate it, draw pictures, do what you can to shorten it down. No one's going to memorize you know, eight pages worth of notes that is background to the English literature. Okay, you don't, don't need to worry about that. Uh, then you're going to connect it. So we start out summary, really easy to do, right? I'm not going to say boring, but it's a basic skill. It's not hard to do. It doesn't require a ton of effort. All right, we're just pulling out the main ideas and making sure we can inform. Then we're going to narrow it a little bit in the funnel. We're going to connect. So you're going to connect it to something from class, Maybe it's another class. Maybe something comes up um, in the, with the Celts and their religion and it reminds you of something about that you learn in sociology or a psych or maybe you know, you know, healthy living comes up and when they start talking about family groups or something from English. Whatever it is, connect it to something from class if you can. And then also think about what about outside of class? Can you connect this to Braveheart? You know, can you connect it to uh, music? Can you connect it to job, life situation, something like that? What is our connection? And that's harder to do than the summary, but it's also a lot less that you're writing because you're looking for at least one good connection. Um, and then we're going to narrow it down again to why is it important? That's what we're going to answer. All right, now we've narrowed it all the way down to why is it important. And, and this is where students tend to struggle. Because, well, it's the whole purpose of doing this activity. Remember what, the, the circle, why in the middle? Okay, here's your what, here's, we ha here's our how, here's our why. So why is this important or what information that I found is most important? Uh, an example, a conversation I had earlier in the day with a student, they were like, hey, what do you mean why is the, Ro the Romans? It's not, it's not important, Rome fell. There you go. Okay, why, what, what do you mean? He's like, I looked all over. It doesn't tell me why it's important. Like, no, it's, it's not. You're not going to. This is not something you read out a book and copy and tell someone else. This is you have to use critical thinking now, right? You got to really work to figure out why is this important. So I asked him. I said, all right, well, what happened when Rome fell? He's like, well, people just took that land. So well, not necessarily. I was like, did you look at how it fell? And they're like, yeah, well, the you know the emperor died, and then all, a whole bunch of the generals and governors and people like that all wanted to be like they wanted to be the next Caesar they wanted to be emperor so they gathered their armies and then they started fighting each other and killing each other and then when they were weak everybody from the outside attacked Rome and you know just kind of just fell apart from within because they could no longer support themselves I'm like all right good now why is that important give me though like okay so what can you learn where can you see that like how does that apply today you know, how does that apply to businesses? How does this apply to like governments and business or um, politics? How does, if you're on a sports team, school. yeah, how does this apply? How does this work? How does this apply to a school building? If you're on, you know, if you're on the hacky, uh, hacky sack squad or cheerleading mm -hmm. squad or if you're in the band, like how does this apply? You know, how about your family and your friends? Like how does this apply to them? 
Yeah, and that's what we're talking about. There's always power struggles everywhere, even in your groups of friends or with your family or on sports teams or in a business or an association you're with. And if you allow all of the fighting to come from within, all right, and you're battling each other and creating alliances and trying to knock each other down, then you just leave yourself exposed for all kinds of stuff to get in there and destroy whatever you've built. All right, and, and, and so, but like that's what he eventually came up with just through our conversation. And I was like, okay, bingo, you got it. All right, so that's his, that's his, that's his why. All right, so we learned this, and what was really important to him was to learn about the importance of the concept of family and the concept of working together, um, the concept of, you know, of getting along and cooperating and not letting in fighting distract you from a purpose. He made all of those connections, and it's over here when, with skills and strategies because, as I told you, like our purpose for this class is not just to teach you content, but to, for you to develop skills. And our last one over here says, ask big lit questions, and lit stands for literature. All right, so if you're asking big literature questions or you're answering them, those are things that connect to the world at large in your real life. So the end goal of doing this whole activity is you're going to pull away at least eight things that you can really connect to real life that are useful to you. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to use this to help us get going on English literature when we start talking about the Anglo-Saxons and Beowulf and uh, the rhyme in the Ancient Mariner and you know, stuff like that, Iron Maiden and stuff. Exciting. Oh, yeah, we'll rock out. All right, any questions for me?